Hi, I'm Jack Buffington for RobotBrigade.com. This is another video in my series of videos about digital logic. In this one, I'm going to talk about ROMs, or read-only memories. And a ROM is a logic device that you can use as a lookup table or as a place to store. It's often used as a place to store your program for a uh, microprocessor or a microcontroller. Um, and it is just a combinational circuit that you put an address in and you get data out. And the way that a ROM works, and this is a very simplified version here first, is here's a decoder. All right, and I'm just going to do a two to four decoder. And let's say that this is a, uh, a four bit ROM. All right, so a ROM is not user configurable. You have to send a ROM table to the factory and have them actually make this in silicon. So uh, this is only used if you are going into very high production because the cost of having a ROM made is pretty darn high. Uh, so you want to make sure that your program is completely bulletproof or whatever you're looking up out of this ROM before you have it made. Uh, so before this you'd be programming uh, with an EEPROM or an E. Yeah, nobody really uses EEPROM anymore. Um, anyway, uh, so the way that these work is you have little diodes like that everywhere that a bit is a one. Actually, I should draw these here. These are resistors. Okay, and then we have uh, because this is such a weak signal, and I'll just draw a couple other, these would be diodes. Uh, because these are such weak signals, we have output buffers. Not all ROMs use uh, diodes. They might use a transistor or something like that. But from this, you pretty much get the idea. So this is what is called a one-dimensional ROM. And there is another more commonly used format, and that is called a two-dimensional ROM. Now what I'm going to draw here is a one-bit output ROM. And if you were going to have multi-bits, let's say an 8-bit, you would just have to have eight of these circuits. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a decoder again. All right. And so this is like address 0 and address 1. And then down here, I have a multiplexer, and depending on what your logic is, uh, this could be any number of inputs, and this would be your address 2, address 3. And so, just like the previous one, there's a bunch of connections. There's only two inputs, so we can only have four. Uh, of these. And anyway, you have uh, your diodes connecting stuff up like that. And here is your output. So here we have four address, uh, address uh, bits, which allows us to select one of 16 uh, connections over here, and we get our bit out. And if we wanted to have a multi-bit one, well then we just run the addresses 
into an exactly identical one except for the connections are different to give us uh, data for another output. So that's ROMs. ROMs are used, unlike uh, the programmable array logic and uh, programmable logic array, uh, ROMs are still used because if you are going into high volume, they are very cheap. And so you'll see this in everything from little toys that have sounds encoded into them to maybe in your DVD player, the boot ROM will be that. Um, you typically won't find it for uh, your BIOS and your computer. That would be generally a flash ROM um, or EEPROM maybe. Uh, anyway, uh, that's ROM. So if you enjoyed this video, take a look at my other videos on my YouTube channel. And uh, I also have a nice index of these videos over at robotbrigade.com.